Today's focus is on families. As we continue to fast and pray, let us seek the Lord for breakthroughs within our families. Why is there a need to pray for them fervently? And why is it that it is so often neglected? We need to continue to pray uh, fervently for them because they are the, a divine part of God's plan. What makes a church and nation strong begins with having strong and healthy families. They are the building blocks of a strong church, society and nation. In today's society, we see a breakdown in families with the increase of divorce, children are born in dysfunctional homes, and there has been an increase in child abuses, teenage pregnancies, gangsterism, addictions of all sorts. And, you know, we need to cry out to the Lord to have mercy upon what is happening in our nation. But it first begins with our own homes. We need to let the Lord light shine in our own homes. To set the spiritual foundation right in building according to His plans and His ways. As we reflect upon our own homes, what are the areas of weaknesses that we need to strengthen? Could it be having better communication or quality time with one another? Do we need to strengthen our family altar and to remove hindrances that stops us from coming closer to God and to one another? You see, our relationship with God is not just a personal thing between us and God, but it is a relational thing that alters the way we relate to one another, especially within our families and those around us. The best model for families is to focus on the relationship of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. There was love and unity shown in the Godhead. There was submission one to another. There was respect and honour towards one another. That should be the model that we should have within our homes. But in reality, many homes are suffering due to our own selfishness and our pride. Each wanting our own ways and having our own agendas and plans without consideration of the needs of others. You know, we had a family friend who has two grown children. The father used to spend so much time at work uh, because he wants to see the children through education. He hardly spends time uh, with them during dinner. And, you know, at night he goes out to see his clients. Weekends, he has his own hobbies. And now that the children have grown up, they are doing pretty well. But during their family time, or rather their dinner time, none of them communicates. Everyone is just looking at their own phones. And it is a very sad scenario to know that, you know, they have been provided for, they have everything they need, but one thing they lack is that closeness within the family. So homes are where we are moulded and tested in our character as well. Who we really are in the midst of adversity. Adversity includes trouble, pressure, illness, anguish, trials and testings. And we all face many challenges within our own homes. And our true nature, you know, is shown and comes to surface. You know, in Psalm 31, 7, David says, You have known my soul in adversity. You see, in, in, in our places of difficulty and challenges, our soul is being brought before God and He sees us for who we really are and He desires us to change. Don't we have anger? Don't we have sometimes you know, um, disappointments, deep discouragements and, and sometimes it could be even bitterness that we need to really release uh, to God because He wants to make us whole. And within our own families where we are being tested in our character is that time where our true selves are made known. It is said that if you really want to know someone, ask their spouse, ask their parents, ask their siblings and you know, uh, you will know who we really are when we are at home. So He desires us to be changed, to be uh, transformed within our own homes. But, you know, because of our areas of our flesh, there are areas where people are going through very deep pain and hurts. And the three words that actually build up a family or bring reconciliation is the word, I am sorry. It is that place where we truly uh, reflect on our own weaknesses and apologize to one another, but it's so often neglected. And we carry all these offences through the years. We really need to look into these areas if we want to see the church whole. We really need to ask the Lord for 
his love, you know, to bring about this reconciliation within parents and children, within spouses, to strengthen the relationships one with another so that we have a strong and healthy church. We cannot put a mask and come to church saying that everything is fine, but within our own homes, there is no communication, there's breakdown and of relationships. It is something that grieves the heart of God. And especially so in times of challenges, where you know people are going through financial difficulties, meeting the needs of family, you know, there's pressure building up. All the more there should be a lot of prayer and closeness within the family to uphold one another so that our family relationships will be strong. These are challenging times. Our families are important in the eyes of God and we need to really pray for a breakthrough in 2024 for our families. Colossians 3.12 says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if anyone has a co complaint against another. Even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you were called in one body, and be thankful. You know, let's for a moment bring our loved ones before the Lord. Let us really pray and intercede for them. If there are grievances in your heart towards any member, let's just ask the Lord to soften our hearts, to forgive, to release forgiveness. And now just lead in this prayer. Father, I pray that you will cause our hearts to be tenderized, to be able to love and forgive those who have hurt us, even those who may have passed on, that we will not hold any grudges, we will not hold any unforgiveness, that you will do a deep work in our lives and to be able to release and forgive them and to love them in Jesus' name. If any way that you know, we ourselves may have wronged them, we may have been too busy for our families. We have neglected, you know, our aged parents. Let's just ask the Lord to forgive and to build that closeness in our families. Father, we ask your forgiveness if we have not truly uh, loved and spent time with our loved ones, God, that you will grant us a deeper love for them, a deeper love to spend time, quality time with them, to understand where they are, to be able to hear them out and not reject them even in, in their weaknesses, God. Father, we pray for love, greater love in us. Thank you, Lord. So that is the area of the flesh that God is dealing with. And let us also be aware that the enemy who seeks to steal, kill and destroy is out to target our families. Therefore, we need to pray for it need to cover our families to pray against the onslaughts of temptation, of attacks, of disunity, trying to break up the family. And you know, because we are a corporate body, when we stand together to come against these forces of darkness, our families will be protected. And I'll end with this declaration that FGA families will rise up to this place of seeking God together, being strengthened in our relationships to shine His light in and through families, to the church and to the nation. We declare that FGA families are protected from the attacks of the enemies that seek to steal, kill and destroy. We nullify their tactics and their strategies in the name of Jesus. And we declare a wall of fire around our family members. And truly, Lord God, FGA families will have strong family altars, strong discipleship, and we will be your shining light to the church and to the nation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.